Good morning, everyone, and thank you for tuning in. Today, we are going to be giving a special presentation just for our online audience. Uh, I'm going to be running through a brief presentation on the engagement strategy and the List of Good Lobster Fishing Plan, and then we'll be going through some of the questions on our prioritization survey. That way, for those of you who want to take the survey online, you can watch the presentation as kind of a guide to help you answer some of the questions. So my name is Don Germain, and I am the engagement team leader, and I've been working with the Listigich community over the past few weeks, trying to get some information and some feedback regarding the formation of a Listigich lobster fishing plan. So we'll run through our presentation first, and then we'll take a look at the survey together. So currently, Listigich does not have a lobster fishing plan that was created by Listigich members. The only plan that is in place has been created by the created by the Department of Fisheries and Oceans. In 1993, the Mi'kmaq fishing law was created, and shortly after, in and around 2010, the marine law was created. For those of you who want to look up the marine law, the LMG OIC number is 1867. But basically, these two laws state that Listigich First Nations people have the right to govern and manage their own fisheries. The, the fishing law was created more specifically for salmon, but the marine law does encompass all marine activity that happens in our waters. So based on these three pieces of information, the Listigich Fisheries Department and the Listigich Chief and Council decided that it was time for Listigich to create our own fishing plan because sometimes the one created from DFO it's like a cookie cutter plan that's meant for all license holders. And as Aboriginal people, we know that our needs and our interest in the water and in the resource is different. So over the last three weeks, we've been collecting information from the community based on ideas that they would like to see developed in this list of lobster fishing plan. So in the development of a lobster fishing plan, we're, we're taking it through stages. The first stage is the stage we're in right now, and that's the initial community engagement to gather views and perspectives. Very, very shortly, we will be developing options and drafting a plan. So all the information that my team has collected throughout this process will be handed over to the fisheries department, and they will begin the process of drafting a list of good lobster fishing plan. Of course, there will be some community engagement on the plan, and we're hoping around the 22nd or so of April that we should have a final plan to present to you. But we do realize that it's important for you to see the draft. So in and around the date of April 1st, we will be presenting a draft plan, and I will be presenting all of the results that we've received from the community engagement. So April 1st, looked for the first draft. And of course, we'll be looking for some community feedback on that, just to make sure that we've heard you correctly and that we've hit all the most important points that the community has been talking to us about. And then around April 22nd, we will be releasing the final fishing plan that will be used for this commercial fishing season coming up in May. So once the draft plan has been created, the fisheries department and chief and council will go through the process of engaging with neighboring Mi'kmaq communities uh, just to see what kind of practices they've been using and how they've been able to develop their plans. Engagement with the Government of Canada because of course there is still the Department of Fisheries and Oceans that we do have to maintain a working relationship with. And then of course revising the final plan which I mentioned we're hoping to release around the date of April 22nd. After that it's the community approval of the plan which by that we mean ratification, putting the plan into action. And then, of course, the implementation of the plan, which we're hoping to schedule for this commercial season, May. So I want to give you just a little bit of information about the current state of Listigich lobster fisheries so that you'll have some information to um, look back on when you're reviewing the survey. So we're going to talk about the fishery location, the types of fisheries, and the participants. So for those of you who don't know, for the lobster commercial fishery, which happens in May, and for the lobster food fishery, which happens in October, both areas, both uh, industries are able to fish out of area 21. So both the commercial and the food fishery fish out of this very small area. It's actually called 21B. You can see it here on my red circle.
And as mentioned, there are two types of lobster fisheries that are conducted in Listigutch. The first one being the commercial fishery and the second one being the food fishery. So let's go over some of the characteristics and differences between those. So the commercial fishery operates from May, from May to July. It's approximately two months. And the food fishery operates for about three weeks in September leading into October. The commercial fishery, we receive four licenses from the Department of Fisheries and Oceans, and that translates into four vessels. So we send out four boats, four large lobster boats, into Zone 21B during the commercial season to fish lobster. In the food fishery, last year we had eight vessels participate. But the difference is, is that these four licenses transfer into four vessels, where this one license in our food fishery translates into 500 tags and those tags are dispersed amongst community members and fishing boats. In the 2016 season, about 27,000 pounds were of lobster were fished. And in the 2016 food fishery season, about 50,000 pounds of lobster was fished. The commercial fishery is regulated by DFO and the food fishery is mostly regulated by the LMG, meaning the fisheries department. So we talked a little bit about the fact that the only plan that governs the way Listigutch community members fish lobster has been developed by the DFO. So let's talk a little bit about the DFO's approach and we can see why maybe that approach may not be best for our community. They go off what's called an effort based management system, which really does put some strict limits on our fishing abilities. And this effort-based management system is based on unsupported and outdated information. Some of the research, some of the data that they're using has been pulled from research that was conducted 10 years ago. And also it's not very specific to Listigutch's needs, customs, or our rights. And when we say rights, we mean our Aboriginal rights, our inherent rights, and of course our treaty rights. So this effort-based management system doesn't work very well for us. It kind of makes an assumption on how much we could possibly take out of the water during a fishing season and doesn't account for the amounts that were actually taken. So they're really concerned about what could, you could possibly take and then they base their effort management calculation on that. So when talking about coming up with our own lobster fishing plan, Listigutch kind of takes a different approach. So in Listigutch's approach, we feel it should reflect community needs and it should respect our customs, our traditions, and our laws. It should be based on our Aboriginal and treaty rights, including the right to manage our own fisheries. And that's really key because right now the DFO does have a consultation process which, with First Nations communities but that consultation happens very early in the process. And by the time that decisions are made at the higher levels, Aboriginal perspectives have kind of been forgotten about. And Listigutch feels that it should also meet current and future needs through responsible and sustainable management plans. So again, talking about the protection of the resource and making sure that we can set up a plan that has some longevity so that we can continue to govern ourselves through this type of plan. With the DFO's approach and the DFO's fishing plan, it really focuses on two components, economic and ecological. So of course, it's a commercial industry. They are interested in being able to make money and revenue off the resource. And of course, they're concerned about uh, conservation of the resource as well. Um, I don't think anybody wants to see the lobster go, go extinct, but from the DFO's perspective, the longer that the lobster's around, the longer that they can um, manage economic gain from that resource. So Listigutch has also developed an approach and our approach is a four component approach. So we'll go through those components now. The first one again being economic, we do recognize the economic value of participating in the commercial lobster fishery. Second one being institutional. So this is something that the DFO's plan doesn't have. This institutional component talks about decision making for First Nations peoples. A bottom up approach meaning from the community up to the higher decision makers. 
And it talks about enforcement, how we should be able to govern and enforce our own laws and our own fishermen on our waters. The next, of course, is the social and cultural component. Again, this is a component that does not exist in the current DFO's approach. So in this section, we talk about things like access to the food fishery, conflict resolution in a culturally sensitive way, and how can we create community attachment between the practice of lobster fishing and our list of Gucci Megamot community members. And of course, the last component is ecological. As First Nations people, we do understand we have a responsibility and a relationship with the resource. So we want to make sure that we are caring for it. Uh, we are protecting it and conserving it. At the same time, paying our respects when we do go and fish for the lobster. So when you put all these four components together, the hope is that we will come up with a very effective Listigich lobster fishing plan. So through the three weeks that we've been in the middle of our community engagements, we've really focused on these four components and we've talked a lot to our community members about certain aspects in those areas. And through our discussion groups, the community members have come up with a lot of really great ideas, great approaches and excellent suggestions. And that's kind of how our prioritization survey was created. So the questions you'll find, the 17 questions you'll find on there have been pulled from the actual engagement sessions that we've had with Listigich members. They're not questions that I've made up just off the top of my head. It's information that has come directly from those sessions. So I'll put up on our screen here our next <coughs> Listigich Lobster Fishing Plan event. So on March 23rd, it's a Thursday, we're going to have a community dinner party. And the main reason for having a dinner party is just to show our appreciation because we've had quite a bit of contribution from our community members and that contribution has been so valuable to the process. So we just wanted to kind of have an event where we can get together, celebrate, socialize. We're going to be serving salmon and moose stew uh, along with some door prizes we'll have to give away. And we've also got some live entertainment. So uh, Tommy LaRock will be performing for us. And during the evening, if anybody has any questions about the survey or wants any clarification, of course, my team and I will be there. And it's an opportunity for us to sit down and fill out the survey together. So in saying that, what we're going to do now is talk a little bit about the survey. That way, if you're online and you're reading through the survey and there may be something that you want clarification on or something that's not quite clear to you, you can reference this presentation and hopefully that will help you in being able to make the best choice for your answer.